Okay, so we're recording. Uh, we'll upload this to YouTube uh, after for people. Uh, it's not live stream though. Um, I guess, yeah, the, the main purpose of this call, just based on the conversation in the last Al Kordev, I think is to try and figure out what's the best path forward for EOF and um, how do we kind of get started working on that? Um, I think. There was a lot of discussion on Encore Devs about whether we want to do kind of one big EOF release or you know split it up. It seems like people would rather have one, but the risk there is that uh, if it's too big, it might not make it into Shanghai. Although some people were optimistic that maybe we can make one big EOF version and get it into Shanghai. Um, I think the the biggest probably uh, uh, objection by uh client teams is like the idea of like changing the version too often so maybe if there's a way where um we can minimize the sort of long-term maintenance costs uh even by doing and uh, not everything in shanghai that would be uh that'd be another option um but yeah i guess i don't know i'm curious uh maybe from like Alex, uh, I don't know if Powell yeah Powell's on the call as well like uh the two of you are, are like the authors of this after the last all core devs, like, what do you feel is potentially the best path forward here? And um, yeah. Yeah, I can see a few words. Um, we had a bunch of internal discussions as well as discussions with uh, Solidity. And more specifically with the DevNet, uh, we actually figured that the DevNet would be like a, a really good um, place to test out some of the the questions which have been discussed. Um, for example, but of course, this really depends on resources on which everybody is low on. Um, but a hy hypothetical example um, of what could happen on a test net, on a DevNet is launching only the first two EIPs and then rolling out the static jumps and just seeing if that uh, needs a version bump or not, and then rolling out the, the function um, feature, which definitely needs a version bump and just build up more confidence um, you know, regards these changes, because we, um, in terms of like, you know, um, rolling out them in step-by-step, step, um, which I do believe we don't wanna actually do on, on mainnet, um, but it would be interesting to actually test this um, uh, on a DevNet itself. Um, yeah, I think nothing has changed since all core devs in regards to what would be the, the optimal case in our opinion, which is rolling out everything at the same time. Um, but we also discussed some, some improve, potential improvements to the functions um, uh, feature uh, with Solidity, which we wanna uh, prototype. Um, I'm gonna stop here now. Thanks. Um, Andrew, so you have your hand up. Uh, yeah, uh, I'd like to uh, elaborate on my understanding what the problem is. Uh, I kind of what, what Mario said, and if Mario is here, he can um, uh, he can also uh, talk about it. But how I see the problem with uh, our initial uh, uh, desire to have EOF in Shanghai is that. It didn't did, did, like the, the the two initial eaves. They they don't deliver much, and uh, we would like to have a complete package uh, with uh, uh, with some uh, benefits. And to my mind, uh, we also need to add one, one extra eap uh, to completely disable uh, dynamic jumps and uh, to verify that we can compile solidity contracts without dynamic jumps and that would be a certain feature of uh, EOF because without it, without disabling dynamic jumps, then it's not clear what is the win of uh, EOF. So uh, I kind of, how I understood it, and I, I concur, Mario's point is that it doesn't make sense to have a somewhat uh, intermediate version of EOF, EOF1 that doesn't, doesn't give any benefits, just introduces a new format, but then we'll have EOF2, which will presumably deliver benefits, but then there is no, no urgent need, no urgent pressure to have 
some kind of intermediate uh, version without any benefits. Th that's my take. Thanks, uh, Marek. Uh, yeah, I'm wondering if uh, for Solidity team or for smart contract developers, it will be useful to have uh, two EIPs. If yes, uh, we can use Shandong and Shandong contains main EIP and code validation. And uh, we can add more EIPs later. Uh, but as I understood, Andrew, uh, this testnet could be useful when we add static uh, relative jumps. Uh, and yeah, that, that is what I want to say. Got it. Anyone else have thoughts just following from the last quarter of calls? Uh, and and uh, I would like to add uh, at least how I see it, uh, maybe because I don't know anything about uh, solidity, but to my mind, the, the uh, trickiest bit is actually uh, implementing it in solidity. Uh, and if we have verified that we that it works fine in solidity, then uh, on the client side, and we have uh, like a, a, a complete uh, um, a complete spec, spec uh, then maybe it's not that difficult to add it uh, into uh, into EL in clients. But perhaps I'm wrong. Perhaps it's not that difficult in, on the Solidity side. Thanks. Anyone else have thoughts? Uh, just following from the core dev call. Um, yeah, like I'm like a bit more optimistic right now. Uh, so I kind of expected that we actually decide that we don't any of that in Shanghai because there's no space for it. And there's like two two major features that people want to be in the next hard fork. So um, yeah, at least <clears throat> I'm glad there are some people interested still in this and we can work it on, on, a, on a side kind of. Um, and one more one comment about solidity uh, from the from this some discussions we had. Uh, I think they're kind of neutral in the sense that this there's not really like killer feature in the OF they desperately need and that would like make their their life much better. Uh, other like code generator because they can target existing KVM more or less with the kind of similar efficiency. So it's, I think actually in this like solidity case, it's not like game changer. Uh, but I guess if, if we don't have uh, dynamic jumps uh, for EOIF, it may be, if it's still possible, if it's, if solidity is still fine with it, then the, the uh, the benefit of EOF would be uh, easier verification and probably some uh, speed gains because there, there won't be uh, any jump check, uh, jump desk check analysis and stuff like that. So there, there will be a small gain. Yeah, but it's it's not directly for them because it, it doesn't really matter. Like technically, if they like use the existing jobs on the new jumps, like how they generate code, like they will like do the same kind of thing. But... Uh, right, but not really something that's changed the code generation, right? So maybe it will be a bit cheaper, uh, but this is not like exactly like answered how much cheaper that will be if the jumps are cheaper. Um, yeah, that's kind of try to express what 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 was my understanding of, of kind of the position. Um, Alex? Yeah, I would say the, their position is a bit more subtle than that. Um, just to answer like Andrew's question, whether the first, um, just like the, the, the format change would give any benefit to Solidity, it doesn't, um, but it also doesn't require any major changes. In fact, that EIP was already implemented last year in Solidity and it's fairly small. Um, the, the main benefit it, it brings is rather from trying to verify um, EVM code. Um, so it could be useful for, for L2s. And since it doesn't really introduce any like gas reductions to the user side, any speed benefits it gives to the client um, comes as a, as a benefit because 
there's no reduced um, gas. So it technically could speed up clients in a minuscule percentage. Now, regarding the full set of features that I think does bring benefits to solidity um, on two sides, what we discussed. Um, it can reduce um, some of the pressure on the code layout generator. Um, because right now they have to move around like the return address on the stack. Um, and it can also, depending on what gas prices we end up uh, deciding on, uh, because the gas prices for the function section isn't actually decided yet. Um, it could bring, uh, um, I mean, first of all, it should be at least the same cost as it is today um, in the worst case, um, but likely it could bring some or more benefits on, on the gas side. Um, and it could also bring um, some slight code size reduction. Um, and implementing all this in, in Solidity, it's not um, inherently complex, um, but it, it will take a tiny bit of time because of course the team is kind of overloaded um, with other work. Um, there was one feature they're planning to add, with, which is uh, algebraic data types. Um, in which um, some of these features would actually be useful. Um, so that's what we we have been discussing, um, but there's no resolution on that yet. Thanks. Um, My point of view, um, a couple things. Um, if the gas prices for your jump are anything close to my estimates in 2315, which they should be, um, there'll actually be substantial reductions in the cost of making, uh, making function calls. And uh, more important, or at least as important, um, so long as we have dynamic jumps, we cannot generate machine code from byte code in uh, linear time and space. And that's that's very important for getting performance. Thanks. Um, okay. Any other kind of high level comments about this? If not, then, um, so we have Sheng, oh, yeah, Jurgen. Sorry, uh, I think there is two things here. One is introducing new opcodes, basically static jumps and call of the function. And second thing is object format, basically enforcing those things to basically using only those things and removing all jobs. So first step would be introducing all those uh, opcodes. So the slate, the compiler, and everybody working around it can use it. And then the second step is introducing format that's going to disable old jumps. So maybe for the first version, we should just introduce those opcodes. And for the second version, it may be the, not the, the next hard fork, but the one after it, we could introduce object format that basically disables old opcodes. That's from my side. That can't possibly work. You can't, you have to get rid of dynamic jumps even to be able to validate the safe use of the new constructs. Yeah, but you need to introduce new constructs before you can disable old ones. Yes, but at all, it's one piece. You can't validate the safe use of the new jump constructs and the function call uh, until you have disabled the dynamic jumps. You can't validate their safe use. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that's that's why I'm saying there are two steps. One is introducing them, being basically in the wild. And second step is introducing format and validation of the bytecode that's going to remove the old jump codes, but use only the new ones. So you're going to make me wait two more years before I can <laughs> generate machine code. 
uh, think, think, think about that in this way. If we are going to introduce new opcodes, it's basically we are restraining ourselves and saying we are going to use them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Andrew? Uh, how I see it, in, in terms of the implementation, it's absolutely fine to move step by step. So yeah, the first natural step is to introduce the new opcodes and uh, the, the new uh, call F, red F, whatever instructions. But uh, uh, to my mind, it should be a kind of a parallel stream of work. So the, the, the dedicated stream of work to EOIF. And we do not release it into, into a main at uh, hard fork until we, we, we have the, the, the last bit, uh, uh, namely disabling uh, dynamic jumps. That will be, uh, uh, then we can say, oh, okay, so we've implemented the new uh, instructions and with the new instructions, we can disable dynamic jumps and it's all in the new EOF format. Uh, and that's your know, format is version one, uh, because Mario's concern was, which I share, is that there is, if we introduce some uh, UIF uh, format version one, which has dynamic jumps, then we'll have to support that forever. And I would rather avoid doing that. So in terms of, yeah, in terms of implementation, absolutely move step by step, but in terms of adopting it, as a mainnet main net update, then I, I would go for one for the whole package. That's the main. Basically, I totally agree with that. There is no sense in introducing the format that's going to be temporary and basically stuck inside the EVM for the eternity and probably not going to be used. But we uh, we want to bundle to maybe separate things. Maybe we should first step introduce new opcodes, leave it for the for, for the while, and then introduce object format after that. That's that's the point. So if we have time to bundle them all together, great. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, format is basically how it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But that's just uh, one of the possible parts, nothing more. Alex? Yeah, you cannot uh, introduce any of these opcodes without the format uh, because they rely on immediates. And if you don't use immediates for them, um, then you go back to the, the original problem of uh, having them efficiently. So they, they definitely depend on the format. You cannot uh, go the other way around. and. And what Greg was uh, explaining that <clears throat> the validation algorithms we have, um, it depends on not having dynamic jumps in order for uh, you know the function sections to properly operate. Uh, Bob. Hey, I was just wondering, um, is anybody not in favor of the end goal of, of achieving all of these separate parts? Because, I mean, what I'm hearing all of this, both in the all core devs call and in this call as well, is really saying, well, hey, can we divide this thing into parts? Do we want to do a step on the way or do we want the whole thing? Um so, I mean, to my mind, that's really like a, a, a risk management thing where, you, you know, you, you've really got work that you can be scheduling and, and all of that stuff is going along. But, I mean, if we, if, we, if we come to a conclusion that a partial thing is not of value, are we then all, you know, in consensus that we would move forward with the combined package? And then that would ship as a single set of changes when when ready that we could aim to do that for Shanghai, depending on how things go. But if it doesn't, the work continues. And does that sound wrong? Is anybody not in agreement on wanting that end goal?
so I think the question is though, assume assuming we all want that that end, that end goal, um, how strongly do we feel about trying to get something in Shanghai, basically? Um, and this is probably where, like, there's there's differences in opinion. Like, yeah, you see the chat um, is there. So um, I, I don't know, maybe a way that to, to, to kind of phrase this is like, what's, you know, what's the minimal set that, uh, that, that people would want to see in Shanghai? What's like maybe a stretch goal in a way? Um, yeah, because, and, and is, we already have basically a minimal set in Shanghai. Um, which is uh, just 3540 and 36 uh, I think the 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 code validation, but um, yeah, is there more like I guess is there more we would want beyond that, even as a minimal set? And then what's the if we could get you know the whole thing in, what does that entail? Uh, yeah, can I ask like uh, who, uh, who who is um, advocating uh, to bring something immediate in, in Shanghai? What what will be the, the benefit of having some something partial in Shanghai? Like clients, you want to give us your take here? Sorry, can you repeat the question? I was still typing in the chat. Uh, Why? So so what what's the the benefit of having something in in uh, partial in Shanghai? I think, you know, I would rather just have the full, like a minimal set of EOF that allows us to deprecate dynamic jumps. But if we're just looking at like what's kind of considered CFRI right now, I still think it's like a strong commitment that we're improving EVM and it like gets us on the pathway to doing these other things. Um, yeah, I think it's been a while since we've really made like substantial changes to the EVM and Shanghai is, in my opinion, the right time to do it. We don't have like huge changes going into it right now, maybe 4844. Um, but I'm guessing that 4844 is going to not be ready until later next year. And so if we do Shanghai early in the year, then it's basically just withdrawals. So that's the right, like we have availability to ship this. And most of it's already done in terms of like specifications and we just need some implementation and testing. So I would rather have the full set to deprecate the dynamic jumps. Um, I mean, is anybody against the full set to do this? Like, are we still debating whether to do that versus the current CF isolated? I think it sounds like everybody agrees that we should do the full thing. The question is, the thing that's unclear to I think a lot of us is why would we do some subset in Shanghai if it doesn't bring any value to users until the full set's in complete? I mean, I don't. Do we even need to debate this? Like, I think that we're just we should just ship the full set. Like, they're specified, they're implemented in some EVM implementations. We have some tests. Like we just need to finish implementing and testing it. Uh, Andrew? Uh, yeah, like my, my preference uh, would be that my, my kind of personal preference, how I see it, uh, is that uh, we can keep uh, Shanghai small and deliver withdrawals there and also solve the issue of synchronizing uh, EL and CL updates. And then have two parallel um, uh, streams of work on top of Shanghai EOF and uh, and uh, e uh, 4844 block transactions. So how I see it, we could create two, uh, uh, two uh, uh, maybe two provisional updates, like uh, two provisional hard forks, EOF and uh, block transactions. Uh, because EOF, uh, what we want to, to do, we want to deliver 
uh, a, a, set, a number of EIPs. Uh, so we want to synchronize which EIPs go in and so on. So it, it's it's a uh, it's it can be a dedicated hard fork, or it can be uh, end up merging with uh, uh, the the work on block transactions. But what I would do, I would separate the two and have two two parallel streams of work because they are independent of, of each other. They might uh, progress with different speed, but when we realize that okay, we, we are done with EOF and block tr transactions are not done, then okay, just have a hard fork. Uh, uh, re releasing EOF stuff, so I would decouple the, the progress of the two. What do you? Sorry, what did you mean at the beginning when you said that we need to have something in Shanghai to synchronize EL and CL? Uh, because uh, previously um, uh, uh, our hard forks were based on the block number, but now we want hard forks to be based on the timestamp. Uh, and that will uh, also feed into the uh, fork ID and things like that. It, it's mostly technicalities, but still something that we should uh, uh, sort out. Okay. I mean, I, I I just think that if the only thing we have going into Shanghai is withdrawals and you know changing the way that we do the fork to timestamp based, it's going to be a very small fork. And I think it's extremely unlikely that we're ever going to have an ELF only fork. There's a well, lot of things because there's so many things being slated right now to go into future forks. Like we have 4844, we have vertical trees, we have data availability sampling. We have all these things that people are wanting to do. And EOF is not going to like overtake something like a vertical. And so I think the best that we no. can do is ship it in with another fork. Well, well, the, the thing is that uh, if we kind of if uh, the, 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 the the work is quite independent, one is heavily on the EVM side and the other is touches uh, the different uh, layers mostly. So if um, it can be even a smaller group of people working on the EOF, but I would like to verify that, okay, we have a working solidity compilation into the full EOF format that works. We can compile con smart contracts into EOF fine. Uh, then we can say, oh, okay, it's ready. Uh, so let's merge it with another hard fork. That's no problem because uh, the bulk of the work is, is, is done already. So it doesn't have to be dedicated. It just the, the timing, the time, uh, my, my point is that we need to decouple the timing, but then we can, we, we, when we are ready, we can couple it with something else. I just don't understand like how what you're describing is different than what's been happening for the last three years. Because I think that there has been a parallel track of people working on these things and they have been developing this and specifying it, like exactly like you're saying. And now we're coming to that point where we want to couple it with a fork. And I think Shanghai is like the perfect fork to couple it with. Right. But I guess maybe uh, like to, to just like zoom out a little bit. I think, you know, the 4844 people would say the same thing um, where it's like I think similarly there's this other effort that's trying to get this in Shanghai so I don't know is the and then what we've landed on basically on the CL side is that we have this uh, this this withdrawals fork and then on top of it uh, we're prototyping for it for four and we might choose to release them at the same time is there a way where we can do the same thing here? Where like, it's basically saying like, look, we're gonna assume we're going for the full EOF. We're gonna get it prototyped. And like, you know, just from like a, a code base perspective, you build it on top of the withdrawals fork, um, but separately so that, you know, you can pull it out worst case at the last minute. And best case, you just activate it on the same block or the block after or whatever. Um, but that gives you sort of uh, time-wise a, a, a way to, to like have them be coupled, but code-wise be separated. Um, and in terms of just implementations, I guess <clears throat> what I mean is I don't think the full EOF is implemented in any client, right? So we probably have the minimal EOF in, in most clients, but um, if we're going for the full and the sort of consensus is we'd like to see the full EOF go live at the same time, then maybe just separating, separating that um, kind of like we're doing with 4844 is the way to go. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, Lucas, you have your hand up. Yes. Uh, so uh, two things from from Nethermind perspective, uh, we already implemented the the EAPs for the, let's say simple EOF are at least are partially implemented, like being tested. And we have capacity to potentially even implement the whole thing uh, for Shanghai, whenever that would be in the end. Uh, but the, the, there's a question of testing it uh, because we are touching more and more things. So uh, complexity of testing rises and uh, that's the main concern of mine. Uh, can we like guarantee sta being stable and secure uh, on the release? Um, yeah, that being said, uh, this has full support of Nethermind and we want to uh, we want to prototype it, we want to be included and we want to see it through, uh, whether uh, earlier or later. Uh, one more thing, Greg, directly, can we can you reach out to me or I can reach out to you uh, about code generation? We have actually one very interesting proof of concept in Nethermind of generating uh, native code from uh, bytecode, like dynamically, and I would maybe this would interest you. And yeah, that's that's it for me. Uh, Ahmad, yeah, um, one suggestion from from me is uh, that uh, how about if some client teams, like as 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 Lucas said, Nethermind is all for for full EOF, obviously, but uh if if some client teams are feeling uh, hesitant uh about implementing the full oef uh, for shanghai what if we can like okay put in the plan that before shanghai in the dev nets we will test eof uh a couple of the ips that are in the eof uh, spec and uh these are a must uh, even if they are not included in Shanghai, but they're a must for DevNets, and in DevNets we will include them, but for Shanghai we won't. And that will push the clients to implement uh, these ones. And then once the spec is finalized for the other ones, uh, the clients can work on them and the full EOF can be included in the next fork, not in Shanghai. Just, just an idea. I think the thing we... I would try and avoid is be in a spot where the code is just very coupled and then we need to remove it from Shanghai, basically. Um, so like um, if, because in the, in the past we've seen consensus issues on mainnet caused by removing EIPs that are activated together. So that would be my only, um, <clears throat> my only like concern there is like, if we're, unsure about the scope then maybe just separating it like you could imagine a, a basic devnet just has the withdrawal stuff and like you know the three other tiny eips and then um you just have another devnet on top of that that activates like all of the eof eips separately um, and this way we can kind of keep iterating on the set of eof eips and the implementations but uh, we're not in a spot where like if we need to, if we decide that like this can't go in Shanghai for whatever reason, that we need to like pull out two EIPs of like the, 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 yeah, the Shanghai spec. Um, yeah. So that'd be my, but I think generally though, it's like, I guess in terms of next steps, we already have Shangdong, which has two EOF EIPs that's running. Um, what would be like the way to just grow that? Um, what's like the next one or two EIPs we would want to see implemented in clients that gives us what we think is, you know, a, a, a good feature set uh, to push for? Can we just have the full EOF in the next testnet? Yeah, what, so the, and, but just to make sure we're all on the same page, so the full EOF is 3540, 3670, 4200, and 4750, is that it? Oh, and 5450, which, okay. Yeah, I mean, 
Paolo, you have comments on this? Uh, yeah, kind of like would like to know what is in this current test net. Like I don't remember the name even, but I know like two two EOF EAPs are there, but like what else? So uh, and check down. Yeah. Yeah, please. I can answer. So uh, EVM object format three five four zero and EOF code validation. And there was uh, there are some transactions uh, on EOF already. So two EIPs. Okay, that's like two. I think so. I think we can go with this like as a like like first sets of features because it's already there and like people can join if they are late and we can already start like doing something with this. Um, but I like for the like first feature set, I was actually considering also adding per zero because that's EVM related. And um, there's one that uh, has additional cost for uh, proportional to the init code size. And this is right, kind so of those those yeah. are already in as well, right? I yes, yeah, they sure are. Because, okay. They are. So yeah. there's anything that's it's not not uh, considered from Shanghai that is not in the testnet? I don't think withdrawals are part of Shandong. I think that's the only one that's included, but not in Shandong. Okay, but that's not um, like fully specified yet. Isn't isn't self destruct also deactivating self self destruct uh, in Shanghai? No, we oh. uh, we haven't made a decision on it. Yeah. So okay. some people would like it to be, but it's not uh, not here. Yeah. Um, Dano, as you had your hand up for a while. So fifty four fifty. Uh, that's the code validation. I still feel it's a little bit underspecified. All it consists is one phrase: is make sure you count the stack heights. Um, as far as what the specification means. Um, we can get the benefit of it without having to require the validation. Um, you know, you're valid or you're not, and that could be something that a uh, implementation detail. So I don't know why that needs to be, you know, a, a grounds for dismissing a contract when it's not as well specified as it should be. Uh, I can answer this. Um, yeah, I think like your, your feelings are right and I agree with this. Um, so we mostly like dump it as a like prototype. So like people like to be noticed that we kind of also working on this. That's why it's just, like this is like in the prototype state, and that's that's not even the first prototype. It's like the second iteration that we internally were working on. That's why it's like Python code describing more or less what we know, and, and there's definitely some work needed on this. So I think I would say it's like kind of research phase at this point. Um, so should we should we remove that? If we're doing your next DevNet, do we want to have that in or do we want to insert? <clears throat> um, so like that are much I have more, kind um, of a bit. Pleasure. Yeah, I think it's it's not something you can easily implement. Um, I mean, you can try and then you can give some feedback, but it's like risky to it's like whatever the outcome will be, I think. I think, um, yeah, I think if it's not, fully specify, like, and given time teams have pretty small resources, like we can always do multiple dev nets, right? Like we don't have to do everything at once. My gut feeling would be trying to add 4,200 and 4,750 first. And that gives the Epsilon team some time to specify 5450 in parallel. Um, and also like a easier target for, for client teams to reach. That might be a better way, I don't know how client teams feel about that? Uh, so like finish this one. Uh, I think like we kind of invite people to like take a look on this and maybe try to understand what we mean by it. And we also would try to like explain what we mean by, by this, like what the benefits are like maybe in like next week or two. Uh, but I wouldn't schedule it for any development at this point. Okay. And uh, it's also not required to get rid of dynamic jumps. So it's kind of not like needed for that. So it's addition that make EVM more efficient and we can save some, like uh, gain some efficiency in the EVM implementation. And yeah, I think I wouldn't uh, spend okay. a lot of time right now on this. 
Okay. So if we have this then as like a, a sort of spec for the DevNet, which is 3540, 3670, 4200, 4750, what's the best way to implement it? Do we just want to extend Shangong and add two EIPs? Um, I know teams are starting to work on withdrawals as well. Um, so like, is it better to just have a DevNet that's built on top of withdrawals? Um, yeah, I, just for client teams, like what's the best way to do it if, you know, we want to be able to bring this into Shanghai potentially, and um, but at the same time, it's not 100% sure that we can. Would we need to do a reset of Shangdong? Because I know there, there was chat around their Discord of doing it this weekend. Um, do we set a date where we're going to turn on the two new eats? I mean, I think Shangdong is a good solution to, to get this, to get something running where people can work together and validate code together on a test network. Yeah, and I mean, we can just call it Shangdong 2 or whatever. Like, I, it's probably easier to do that than to try and like actually hard fork the DevNet, right? So like this, this like uh, assuming it will really continue running for some time, this one, one nice feature, one nice thing we can do about it is to, to deploy uh, static jumps. And the thing is they are backwards compatible with the current EOF that is deployed. So we can test if that works nicely. Uh, I'm not sure if we even need hard work or maybe even coordination will be enough. Like we said, like from this date, clients actually have it implemented. I don't know. What um, is static jumps? What's EIP is that? They did just add two more instructions to the, the EVM. And yeah, it's, but it's 4200, right? That's the... I think, it, no, that's the function. So I don't remember the number. 47, then 47. So 4200 and 4750 static relative jumps and functions. I view those as forward compatible. We don't have to um, reset the system if we suddenly start accepting it at one date because everything that is valid before it is also valid under the future. So it's, it's just increasing the scope and clients that aren't up to date will just fall behind until they implement it. Yeah, exactly. That's only for the for uh, 4750, which are static static relative jumps. They are they're backwards compatible because whatever you add to your instruction, that's fine. So we can. But if we take out relative, we take out dynamic jumps, though that would be a hard. No, break. They, they they will coexist. They will coexist. So we don't have to take away dynamic jumps. We can deploy static, and they will coexist. So that will be fine. So like this is like, like yeah, the, the current version plus addition, which we don't have to like reset the testnet or like schedule a hard fork. I mean, it's not something we can do on mainnet because yeah, but we can like agree like okay, we just deploy it right now, and either you don't send transaction containing it or you just like implement it and then join later or something. I, I don't know exactly. I, not really good okay. at like or organizing testnet, but that would be like the second thing we can add to it. And then we can uh, do the, the last one, which is uh, 4200. That's that's EOF functions and that will require the version bump. So there are two, two ways we can do it. We can do with the like EOF version bump, so we can test it out, or we can just reset the testnet with the new EOF one that have more features. But I think that will be, we will need to like start from, yeah. from scratch. So I don't know, like, we actually have a lot of questions how this like testnet yeah. operate. If there's like monitoring, how to join all of that, but yeah. that can be offline. So yeah, like how to spam it with transactions, how to actually get the EOF code. Yeah, we we've yeah we can I think we can resolve that once we have it implemented in clients. Like we've done this for a bunch of other DevNets in the past. It shouldn't be like a massive blocker. Um, Andrew, I think you were doing, Andrew Ahmad and then Lucas. Um, yeah, my kind of in Aragon we don't have uh, any implementation of EOF. So from our point of view, we definitely would like to separate test test nets for Shanghai core, uh, like withdrawals and whatever goes into Shanghai and EOF. Because if we do them in a single test net, that that that, that would uh, slow down withdrawals for Aragon. From okay. from my point of view, if 
maybe we don't join the UF uh, testnet until uh, uh, relatively late, but you don't need all four clients to prototype this in Solidity and so on. Once yeah. it's all ironed out, then or once it's all settled, then we'll join, of course. Thanks, uh, Ahmad. Yeah, just uh, to 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 clarify, uh, the two EIPs that you would like to include on top of Shandong that are not already in Shandong, uh, which ones are there, and have the Ethereum JS team already implemented them or not yet? The two are forty two hundred forty seven fifty. I'm not sure if Ethereum JS has implemented them. Um. Got yeah, Lucas. Uh, I have a question about state of testing apart from DevNets. Um, I see DevNets as a good, a very good integration testing and a very good practical testing. But from um, implementing point of view, the very use, useful tests are uh, Hive tests, Ethereum tests. And are there any test vectors being prepared there for any of those CIPs, or maybe we have it already in some PRs? So uh, I can ask where you, uh, so for two first EIPs, we have uh, tests, uh, but but I'm not sure about others. And I'm not sure about uh, also um, status of these tests, if they are cover all scenarios, but I think they should. Okay, what's the status of the other EIPs then? Um, yeah, so like for the first two, we have state tests. Um, they are kind of like I don't know, almost ready. <laughs> so you can you can use it there in the pre request for tests, test repo. Uh, we like uh, Ethereum JS actually found an, an bug in the test, so uh, we have to fix. Uh, but so far it looks okay. And and the next one is actually uh, to get tests for uh, the EOF functions. Mm, but the blocker is that we have to implement it in the GAF first because that's the way to generate tests. Uh, and this is work in progress. So that's more as a status. I don't know how to, I mean, they kind of also generate, you can convert state tests to blockchain test. And I think the blockchain test work on Hive. So, so I guess we have some pieces, but that's probably not fully integrated. So maybe we need some help. Okay. I mean, so the, so the kind of like one of the issues that we're not allowed to merge these to the main tests because they are not like decided if they're going to Shanghai. So they are living somewhere else. And I don't know how to make somewhere else to be brought to the hive testing. So like all of this like moving parts, that's that's kind of the problem, I think. So we for have our, so if, that's, if you know that's how to find good it. enough for us. Yeah, that's good enough for us. We can execute them from from a brand uh, from PRs, no problem. Okay, I guess yeah, the two questions like I think are really important to answer before we wrap up is one, I think. <clears throat> Sorry, I think we, we have agreement like 4,200, 4,750 um, is, is, is what we should go for. How do we implement it? Um, like, do we have this just in Shandong? Um, is that the simplest for, if it's simplest for Geth based on Nethermind and not Aragon, it probably makes sense to do this as like a V1. Um, but then if we do that, are we just like, painting yourselves in a corner where if EOF is not in Shanghai, then it's a ton of work for client teams to, to decouple withdrawals and the three other small EIPs from EOF. Um, yeah, I, I'm curious, like what's the, how the client teams feel about just what's the most efficient way to implement this? And um, does this lock us in a, a specific direction?
So it just seems like so, it's a Sorry, Tim, yeah. could you repeat the question? So, because yeah, so sure. for, yeah, for Nethermind, um, is it easier to just extend Shen, Shengdong with those two I EIPs? See, I see. Or should we create a new test net and kind of have a separate fork where like fork one is basically the Shanghai core stuff. So withdrawals and like the other small EIPs and then fork two would be EOF basically. So uh, my opinion is if we want to uh, create a hard fork on Shandong, uh, yeah. we should decide how we want to uh, fork it by timestamp or by block number. And maybe it will be easier just to uh, restart Shandong on this stage. It's not like big damage because uh, we did yeah. it a few times. So uh, I think maybe the better will be start uh, restart the Shandong when uh, we implement these features. Okay. Uh, and if, but, if but we restart I Shandong, I agree, like not having to deal with the timestamp stuff is probably good. If we restart Shandong, do we want to have one or two different hard forks on it? Like, do we want EOF to be part of the same hard fork as all of the rest of Shanghai, or do we want to separate it in the code so that it's easier to not turn EOF on in the case where it wasn't part of Shanghai. I think the, the other EIPs that are included in Shandong already are fine and uh, are already implemented from our side. So we don't have a problem with them being included with whatever EOF EIPs we want to add into Shandong. Uh, so that I, I believe, uh, it's 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 fine to just stick with Shandong for any EOF testing and just include the same EIPs. Okay, and that means and and then that won't cause a problem. Say we do have Shanghai and EOF is not in it, then you need to have basically Shanghai without EOF, and you kind of need to rework that. Uh, for us, no, it's no, no. not not a problem because uh, okay. we can specify what EIP we want to include exactly. in configuration so it's not a big deal okay uh andrew uh well from uh, for aragon uh, the strong preference is to have uh, to re restart shangdon without any eof ips uh concentrate on but but have withdrawals and it's like concentrate on withdrawals testing and make sure that withdrawals and shanghai or work fine uh, and uh, have a, a, a fork later, or maybe a parallel test net. So I, yeah, I, uh, our preference is definitely to decouple uh, with Shanghai Core and EOF. I have base you guess any thoughts on that? Can you repeat it? I was in chat land. Yeah. Um, so basically, is it better for Beisu to just have the Shanghai core stuff separate from EOF and then have kind of another fork activate, whether it's on Shandong or somewhere else, that just includes the four EOF EIPs? Um, it can be written so, to support both because we could just underneath the covers do Shanghai and then Shandong on top of it. Yes, um, that's what I'm asking, yeah. Push zero is is the only thing that goes in the EVM core. The rest are around it, warming the corn base, uh, limiting the init code. Um, my concern, though, is what's going to come from the EIP bonanza on Thursday during the next all core devs call. Yeah. Stuff like transient store, um, unlimited right. block size, um, auth zero. I mean, some of those are going to get shot down, but I don't think all of them will get shot down. So I think. <laughs> My preference would be for us to have devnets that are building towards what's actually included and then separate devnets that build for stuff that's like CFI or on, on the fence. And that's kind of why I think it would make sense to like refactor Shangdong because then you can have, regardless, you know, if we decide to include something next week, say we decided 1153 was included or BLS was included, that becomes part of Shanghai core. We like change that set of EIPs there. And then um, if 
you know, we have something like uh, EOF. We just build it on top with the 4844 stuff. We also build it on top. And then at the point where, where these get included, we decide to like, um, yeah, we, we decide to merge them together. Um, but that would so, mean it's a bit more work now for client teams, but I think it might put us in a spot where it's easier to like add and remove stuff. A la carte dev nets is expensive dev time. Um, it's expensive to maintain the code paths. It's bug prone. It's how bugs get introduced. So I'm not a fan of um, a la carte specific test nets turning features on or off. I would prefer to see it be a small number like two. Shang Dong is Shanghai. Would also, sure. yeah. I would also prefer to try and minimize the number of configs we define. So okay. like maybe one extra one is okay, but like generally I think, I, you know, I would also just be happy to have like a core Shanghai and continue building on this. And whenever, if, and whenever we happen to remove things that we can cross that bridge and remove them. I don't think that that's going to be like, you know, a huge amount of work. Okay, so I guess that means uh, we would add the EOF stuff to Shangdong because that's the closest we have. I don't know what that means for withdrawals though because they're not activated in Shangdong. So um, there's no chance we'll activate withdrawals for the next Shangdong or the next test or whatever it is. Well, I think from all core devs, it's like, we're going to want some withdrawals DevNet as soon as possible. And then the question is like, what else should be part of that? So that's kind of where I want to make sure we're, we don't like diverge too much here because it's like, if, if on one hand we have people implementing withdrawals, that's actually the main thing we want to like prioritize. How do we make it so that like, I don't know, we, the EOF stuff doesn't make that harder. Um, yeah. And you're saying it's bundling all that in a single config, Matt? Uh, I mean, from my perspective uh, on Geth, that's yeah. pretty straightforward for us. Okay. But I think that we have maybe a bit more of EOF implemented than smaller clients. So it's a little, it's a little less work on that front. Um, yeah. But like, if I was the only one making the decision, I would just say to have the next test net have everything slated for Shanghai, including the full EOF, including withdrawals. Right, but we haven't decided that full EOF is slated for Shanghai. That's the thing. And, and I think this is why it's like kind of tricky. Same, and it's like the same issue with 4844 is like, you have these two big things that are sort of on the fence and how do we test them without having committed. Uh, Alex, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, why don't we just target a testnet that's for the CFI EIPs, and then if EOF stuff is ready, we can add it. Uh, I guess the concern is it's going to be complicated to like have that optionality in the clients, but I don't think we should like block it just for uh, this other work stream. I mean, that, that kind of was what Shendong was, though, just without withdrawals, right? So to me, it's like, we've had Shindong running for a couple of weeks with all the CF, I think minus withdrawals, people have been working out withdrawals. Some people are interopting. And so the next one can just have withdrawals since we're already about there. And then we can try and target the other EOF EAPs. Who's interopting? Uh, Mario said that Geth and Prism have interopted. Okay. We're already so why a bit... can't we... Oh, so please. Well, why... Sorry. Uh, why can't we just uh, leave Shanghai, uh, Shandong as the as it is right now and add EOF to it? And if we want to test withdrawals, we we spin a dev net, a Shanghai DevNet uh, that has that Shanghai core, uh, quote unquote, uh, thingies. The IPs. Then we've like implemented all of EOF for Shandong and we've implemented withdrawals for Shanghai. So it seems like we could just 
have that together. But we can have it together once it's done and we decide. Like, and, and I guess the, the thing I really want to avoid is say it takes us an extra week to implement like, I don't know, some EOF EIP. You don't want that to delay the withdrawals work, right? Like, or whatever's already included. So that's the risk I see with just bundling them is, um, Right, so exactly yeah. how coupled are they? Because like, if it's easy just to like basically, you know, flip a switch, then we don't have to worry about it. Yeah, yeah, and I guess that's my question is like, is it, what's the thing to optimize for in clients? Is it just like the number of actual DevNet configs or how coupled the activation is basically? If it's fine to like have, if we want to minimize the number of dev nets, then sure, let's just put everything in Shangdong. But then that means that we might want, um, we, we might be in a spot where like we have seven things in Shangdong and we're removing four of them. And is that like a worse place than if we just built them separate and had not coupled them because we didn't have this thing go in? It depends on which four features get removed. Um, the EO, EOF I view is fairly integrated, but the other random instructions I view is very, fairly severable. Um, so as far as officially pulling things out of Shandong into Shanghai when they're proven, I think that shouldn't be too terribly hard, especially if it's, the, the, if it's all of Shandong on top of all of Shanghai, it'll be really easy. So when we pick and choose out of Shang, Shandong, depending upon the features, then it might get harder. But, but Shandong does not include anything uh, that is not in Shanghai yet, unless it's yeah. EOF. And as agreed, we will only include EOF as one package. So right. it's, it is exactly right. as you said, that if we want to have EOF and we decide that we, have, we will have EOF in Shanghai, we can just put all of Shandong on top of Shanghai test. I'm concerned if other things like unbounding code size, or auth or t store and t read come in and the thing is that yeah right now we yeah shangdong basically has all of the included stuff not withdrawals two eof eips but not four mm -hmm. so it's kind of a weird frankenstein mix of like but i view yeah. what i listed as fairly severable eof is one group yeah. t store t load is one group um, unbounding cone size is one group and auth and auth load is one group, although they might get pretty, pretty hairy to put it in. And I'm not even sure that those will pass uh, muster next week. So I guess, yeah, just because we're already, we're already kind of over time. Um, it seems like maybe the lowest friction thing to do in the next couple of weeks is to try and just add 4,200 and 4,750 to Shengdong, whether we restart it or hard fork it or not, you know, that doesn't really matter. And then maybe just getting to that spot where we have that implemented in clients interoperating on Shengdong. Um, what we do about withdrawals on Shengdong, I think is maybe another question. Like we can have the withdrawals discussion on all core devs, figure out the best way to test that. Um, if it's Shengdong, great. If it's not, we just do something else. Um, but yeah, does that make sense to people? Just so like we have a clear next step. Um, and how long, I guess, yeah, last thing is like, how long do we think we need to get that done in clients? And should we have another one of these calls after that to figure out the right thing? Or can we wait until the next software devs and discuss things there? Um, yeah. Well, for, for Aragon, it's like, it's the, the um, it's a bad option because uh, yeah. we, uh, we would like, I mean, uh, I think the general understanding is that withdrawals take priority of, uh, uh, EOF. So if we have to first implement EOF to jo join Shandong, then that will delay the, the work on withdrawals. Right. Well, withdrawals is not in Shandong yet, right? So like, it's possible to implement and I believe test withdrawals without Shandong. Uh, I know Marius was working on some stuff there. Um, 
because I, I agree i agree like this like basically withdrawal should take priority over like all the other sort of prototype stuff um maybe that i i don't know yeah i i'm not sure what the best path is here Yeah, uh, to my mind, we just need two 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 test nets, uh, one for withdrawal and one for uh, EOF. And uh, whether we which one of them Shandon will be, it's another question. But as I see it, we need we need two test nets. So probably even three for one for EE, uh, four eight for four, another one. And then, but yeah, Matt, you were saying that's actually the most complicated thing for get. Is to have multiple testnet configs. Uh, why? Why is that? I don't know. Oh, and Matt has left. Um, um, but I don't know. Yeah, that would be my preference as well. But I think Matt seemed to say that like having more testnet configs was more complicated. But I think, think it, if we could have one could test have net for Shanghai Core, for Shanghai and Core, one for and EOF, one and for one for Point Four Four, that would be sort of my my preferred option. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. It seemed complicated for guests to do that. I don't know for other client teams. Is that is that doable? No, no, it's not complicated for us. So. It is fine to have three test nets. So one Shanghai core, uh, Shandong, so EOF and uh, EIP for eight four four. That is how that I means, see things. Okay, but that means we should reset Shandong because it means. Um, let me actually write this down super quick in HackMD. Uh, so you have Shanghai core, which would have these EIPs. Uh, sorry, I'll share my screen in like one second, but just to make sure we're all on the same page uh, about this. And then Shangdong and uh, Shangdong and 4844 both activate after uh, Shanghai Core. Um, so, so 44, and then Shangdong activates these four. Okay, sorry, I know this is kind of weird. Okay, uh, let me share this. Uh, so I guess at a high level, yeah. Um, that means we would have to kind of rework Shandong because there's these two EIPs already, but you basically... Yes, exactly. Yeah, and then uh, these two yeah, sort of are in parallel. Uh, 4844 in Shandong, basically. And we'll call this Shandong B2. Does this, I don't know, does anyone have a strong disagreement on this? Uh, so, so you want to uh, fork uh, testnet, so you want to have one testnet? But uh, fork it. No, no, times. no. I just no. But ah, I mean okay. that, like, in the Genesis file, you sort of have, you know, the like Shanghai core activation at like block zero, and then maybe you have Shangdong activate at like block one or whatever. Or I don't know if client, some clients can put them at the same block. But then and then the the four eight four four test net is just like this, right? So, but this is like Shangdong. Ah, I see. And then so this it is will be easier. It yeah. will be easier for Gaff team to activate it in this way. Uh, and I think Aragon, Andrew, that's what you were saying. That would be easier for you, right? Um, yeah, so uh, we would like to concentrate, uh, well, first to uh, concentrate on Shanghai Core and withdrawals because we might yeah. uh, join the UF uh, testnet quite late. Yeah. So my, my point, if, if we are forced to join it early, then it will probably delay our yeah. work on withdrawals. Yeah. And I think... If we do it this way, it's a bit more work for the people who are already in like working in Sheng Shengdan and on EOF, but I think it might be fine because it means they can sort of set things up for others to catch up on. Um, 
And then that means it's like, yeah, teams that are not as far can just focus on this. And we make sure that this bit goes out and say we add, you know, say we added an EAP included to Shanghai, uh, you know, like other next hour for devs, then it just goes here. Um, and so, and similarly, say we decide to move all of EOF, then this just becomes Shanghai core. Or, you know, if we decide to add 4844, then we just add this here, but we keep, basically we keep these blocks separate so that it's easy to like merge them as needed, but you never have to like take only a subset of a block. Um, but but I would have like do, do, do you mean that we need two 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 test nets because to my yes. mind we need three three because yes. Yes. we need a, a test net just just uh, for Shanghai yes. Core. Uh, yes, correct. Okay. So you have three test nets. Yeah, you have Shanghai Core, Shangdong, and four eight four four. Um, Shanghai Core just activates this stuff, and then but then the two other test nets they activate it, but they're almost like two different forks. They just activate one after the other, or if it's other to, easier to bundle it all together in one fork, that's fine as well. Um, but the CL clients are like doing 4844 this way, basically, um, where they activate Shanghai core and then the, 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 oh, does anyone like, do people generally see my screen? Or is it just Dano? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I was like, damn, if I could, this is harder to follow if there's no text. Um, just, just to be clear, uh, Shandong yeah. will still include uh, 3651 and 3855 and 3860. Yeah. Well, yes, but the question is, I think it's probably worth it to treat that as a separate fork in Shandong from EOF, right? You just have like two different hard fork configs. One on block zero that activates Shanghai core, one on block one that activates EOF, basically. Why? Or the, what, what, why? what is the reasoning behind this? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't. Is get this? It. Oh, I guess for CL clients, this is easier to do. But if for EL, for ELs, it's easier. Are you saying it's easier to activate all of this? And like to just bundle it in one fork and then remove this part if you don't need it, basically. Um, no, because it will be a totally different devnet, so you don't need to remove anything. There will be different config files for each devnet. That's it. So it, it you won't need to fork or do anything. You will have one conf one config file for Shanghai, including includes the first four, and another config file that includes the first three plus the the four from Shandong that you are listing. And okay. for uh, 4844, four, four, you would have the first three plus 4844. Four. And that's it. Right. So I don't think the 4844 four like this would work with how CL clients are doing it, basically. Um, so CL clients treat them as like, um, CL clients treat them as just different forks that get applied one after the other, rather than like a different fork config. Because this means from, from, if we from yeah. Shandong from Shandong experience, because we had to run a CL client for Shandong as well, yeah. we had also a like a separate config file for the CL client okay. that it's has okay. the configurations. So it's 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 not that for each testnet you need to fork. No, it's it's not like that. For one okay. testnet, you have one config file, period. So then, okay. So then that means, say you have something like this. Shanghai core is this. Shangdong, you you don't think we should have withdrawals basically, um, yeah. in it. So this yeah, would be Shangdong, like V two, and then these three are already in there. Uh, Yep, exactly. And I don't know then, if, if if people want to include anything more in 4844. Uh, it's up to you guys. Well, uh, we should. I think this is probably what it looks like. Or I don't know if it's, do we need withdrawals, basically? Like, do we just do something like this? 
Well, no, oh, this is the issue sense. with like Lighthouse, where you're gonna want to have Capella and then four 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 after. Right. That's yeah. That's what I was saying. But then it seems like Shangdong doesn't work that way. But that was sort of my original proposal of like we split them so that they happen sequentially. Wait, um, I'll post this underneath. But like, so if you do this, basically you have like sequential activation. Whereas if you do this, this all activates at the same time. And that's maybe worth discussing just on all core devs next week to see what's the best option for people. I don't know. Do we expect, do we expect to have this running by next all core dev? If not, I think that's probably just worth having as a broader conversation of like how we activate this stuff. Um, yeah. Cause I do think like, yes, yeah, some client teams might some CL client teams might not be compatible with this. Um, yeah. I think we can wait for all core devs. Okay. Uh, but I guess in terms of next steps, then we agree that implementing 4200 and 4750 in clients um, for EOF is, is the right next step. Okay, no objection. Um, <laughs> so, oh, and yeah, Alex, like, yeah, the limit init code would always be there by default in all of the EOF. Like, no matter which config we take, we'll have limit init code um, by default. Um, okay, I think, yeah, I think we're good then. Um, so, in terms of next steps, client teams can start looking at 4200, 4750, and then on all core devs, we can figure out the right, uh, the right. Uh, DevNet config, um, and I'll, I'll write something up and, and share it in the agenda so that, um, yeah, it's teams have, have the chance to review. Um, anything else? Uh, I'd like to suggest uh, that um, you know, that uh, somebody creates an, an EAP for EOF to actually disable dynamic jumps because prohibiting it in UF version one. Alex, is that something the Epsilon team can do? Ah, okay, it's, so it should be already, okay. It's okay. disabled in 4750. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that was the plan to be disabled in it. Um, maybe we missed adding it, but yeah. Yeah, we can debate whether it should be like another EIP or not. <laughs> Because we have already so many EFEs. Cool. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Uh, yeah, and talk to you all on the next, next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.